The Artist Life Podcast is brought to you by Real Creative Heart. Heavy the head that reps the crown. With love, your greatness is found. So rep your crown. Live from Greensboro, North Carolina, Art is Life. Welcome to the Art is Life podcast with your host, Russell C. Holt, where we sit down with artists from all career fields and we discuss their perspectives on their art and what it means to them in life. So sit back, have fun, and enjoy the ride. Well, welcome guys. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Art is Life. I am Russell C. Holt and I am joined today in lovely Greensboro, North Carolina with another um, guru of the acting, uh, teaching styles, um, someone who's been very inspirational and um, informative in my life when it comes to acting. Um, One of the few act, um, acting teachers that I've had on my journey that I could say has had a great impact on my acting in my career going thus far. So I um, wanted to bring him on and, you know, have him share some of his wisdom with you all. Uh, wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce Mr. Jim Wren. Well, Hello. Hello, thank you for joining me. I appreciate this. Sure, thanks for, thanks for asking. <laughs> Looking forward to talking. So, for those who don't know who you are and um, what you do, um, if you wanted to just tell us, you know, a little bit about your background and like how you got started in acting and then became a teacher. Sure. Um, yeah, I think all of our journeys are are unique, and we come at it from so many different ways. Uh, for me. I actually started performing when I was very young. Uh, joined a, a group called the Singing Angels mm-hmm. out of out of Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland is the city, <laughs> uh, and uh, it's a youth performing chorus. So when I was eight years old, I started you know, performing there, and that that was a, a touring choir. We went around. I sang back up. I've blister in my wall over there from Wayne Newton. We sang uh, his craft Christmas special in the sixties. And you know, so it, that became very natural for me. And I thought everyone did it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was really music. Uh, I played the piano and, and sang, uh, and thought maybe I'd go that direction and found out in high school that, you know, there were things called musicals, mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, kind of got involved that way. But I always thought I was going to go into psychology, uh, more because that was underlying everything. I was always interested in behavior, mm-hmm. in human behavior. And so I went to college majoring in psychology and another major in theater at the same time thinking, oh, I could do this too because it's enjoyable. Yeah. Um, but then I realized as I was involved in it that uh, it really was the, the performance and it was the art. It was creating things mm-hmm. that was more uh, attuned to what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So initially I thought I was going to go into then you, like drama therapy and I was going to use theater techniques with mm-hmm. with uh, with therapeutic techniques and mm-hmm. uh, and then realized at some point that uh, that it, I was kind of fooling myself of uh, mm-hmm. it was really you know trying to be logical and have a job yeah, um, yeah. more than the than the, the performance of it and so went to graduate school and focused primarily on on acting and directing uh, and then performing and and uh, the teaching adjunct at first while I was uh, I got my equity card when I was in grad school mm-hmm. and uh, I started performing and then since I stayed in town the university asked me to continue you know, teaching uh, uh, adjunct and then really just fell into waking up five years later and realizing oh my gosh I have tenure and I'm still here and, and running an <laughs> undergraduate program I didn't mean to do this uh, and came to North Carolina which was 32 years ago now but uh, realizing that that the teaching of acting too was something that that uh, I felt passionate about and, and uh, felt that I had a connection to guiding people on their on their journeys. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was kind of bing bang boom, and all of a sudden I was I was doing that full time. <laughs> nice. So when so when you started teaching, were you still performing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when, when did you decide that teaching was like the main like was the main focus? I'm not sure I ever completely decided. I always 
felt that uh, leaving yourself open to options mm -hmm. was was the uh, w was the important thing. Mm -hmm. um, I've never been one to kind of chart out plans. Here's what will happen by this date. Here's what will happen by this date. Um, really, more more kind of. I might sound silly to say playing the hand that you're dealt, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what I found for me was that I was I was acting, I was teaching, uh, I was directing, uh, and then over the years I was paying more attention to my teaching than I was my own performance, mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't that there weren't necessarily opportunities, but I wasn't pursuing those as actively. Uh, for myself, as I was, I was teaching, and then up. Oh, I'll direct this show, and I'll I'll do this, mm -hmm. or I'll, I'll I'll work on this project, or I'll go up to this theater and, and, and direct. Um, so directing started to take over a little bit more, and I think again, it's a it's a personal thing for for folk. Um, for me, and especially, I mean, I was married right out of undergrad. Uh, my wife and I went 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 down to Florida together. Uh, you know, we had our our first child in. In 1988, uh, while we were in our 20s, and I was, we were still both performing and, and teaching. And then, so what started to happen for me was I was less interested in an acting gig that was going to take me away for three and a half weeks of rehearsal or four weeks of rehearsal, and then six or eight weeks or 12 weeks of a run too. Yeah. Um, it was easier for me to direct to to leave town and direct a show, right. and then come back and right. and um, and then again focus on my teaching because even as a as a teacher then, uh, I didn't want to be gone from the classroom mm -hmm. that long, and also then or fly in on a Monday and teach class on Equity right. Day off and leave again right. you know, um, yeah. so it started naturally progressing that so I still was acting and still occasionally will do things, mm -hmm. but that became less of a, a of a need for me to do gotcha. because I found. My, I found a real creative outlet in the teaching. In, uh, yeah, yeah. And would you say, so like having the wife and the child and then also having these children to the, mm -hmm. that were responsible, that you were responsible for as well, you would say that had a strong influence on whether... Yeah, you know, yeah, responsibility mm -hmm. uh, uh, in that sense. I, I've never been one that felt comfortable not following through on things mm -hmm. or shifting and... and, and and this is not a knock, but you know, one of the challenges of acting is it, it really is a, a kind of a constant shift of time and effort. Mm -hmm. uh, find the next job, do the next thing, do, right. you know, yeah. um, and where that takes you and the fluidity of that. And uh, I'm I've always been a little more comfortable with uh, kind of responsibility. Mm -hmm. I never sought out kind of leadership things of I will be in charge of this. I'll be the head of this, mm -hmm. but I, I guess just the way I I work or I, I get more comfortable is in making sure things are <laughs> running well right. for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's why directing came a little bit more uh, of a focus for mm -hmm. me in, in, in addition to the to the teaching. And it's not a knock on act, acting at, at all, right. but it, there is a mentality and a uh, an approach you have to have of of being okay with uncertainty. Yeah, right. And um, based on your you know your personality, directing was something that was more fit for that. Yeah, yeah. A or at the, at the very least, it was you know through my process, through my through my journey, it was more uh, 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 enriching. It was more satisfying to coordinate the whole as opposed to my one track as an actor mm -hmm. um, and so again I think that's just where how we all respond differently to different different processes so as a director uh, what do you what do you enjoy most about it and what do you what is the most challenge for you and then uh, same with what teaching sure you sure I think well it, it, it can be different with every project. It's an easy out to say every project presents different challenges. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but that's true. I mean, I, one of my philosophies always as a teacher and, a, and as a director is on a very simple level, all plays create their own unique world. Mm -hmm. I say that a lot in classes. Mm -hmm. um, and so really creating that world, that's the thing that I, I enjoy most, mm -hmm. of really exploring the, the, the circumstance and creating a world for the entire 
company. Uh, and so the collaborative process with the design team, with the production team, uh, of, of really crafting that, that unique world. Mm -hmm. And so I like, I like to view theater as an event. Mm -hmm. So it's like <laughs> event coordination <laughs> that yes. we're going to create this event. I don't want it to just be, oh, something else to do. Do you want to do this or this? Oh, let's do that. Right. I want to kind of create that, mm -hmm. that event. So that's always the, the, the inspiration and the, and the, and the approach I think is, is working collectively with a, with an ensemble to, to craft this world. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so, you know, the challenges then come from, uh, creating an environment where everyone's buying into that, uh, feels a part of that mm -hmm. um and then navigating always the different approaches and personalities knowing that this actor needs this kind of this kind of connection this actor needs this kind of connection mm -hmm. and and so even over the years for me my i feel like my process has has altered somewhat in and maybe an age thing or just experience or whatever but i feel that you're ego connection to the to the world is different as you move along mm -hmm. as a young director i felt very uh um worried that if something didn't work well it was a reflection on me that i was i was not good mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. if someone wasn't doing their job i could get angry that it was me <laughs> being disrespected or something right, yeah. um whereas I, I feel like i've shifted some uh in that of of everything I do isn't a total reflection of my total value. I think we as artists get caught up with that sometimes that and I'm not saying slack off on the work, but I'm, I'm saying that, that everything that we do isn't automatically a make or break of, of yeah. perfection. Cause we, yeah. Cause we were talking about that in class last semester about mm -hmm. how when you're giving notes to, when you're, when you're giving notes to someone and they take it as they take it as a personal attack on mm -hmm. themselves rather than the act the work that's presented right, right. and like just separating yourself, um, knowing that it's not you personally. It's just the work you presented at the time is exactly. not where it needs to be. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we, we were chatting before, but even in, in athletics, there's a similar thing. That's that. You know, you're you're running the route or you're not. Mm, right. uh, and so I could say, hey, you're not running the route, and I can be mad at you for not running the route. Right. Um, but I'm not. Mad, I'm not mad at you personally. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, you didn't do that work. Or, and so kind of challenging people in a, in a way that you step up and do the work necessary yeah. and identifying that for each of us. And I know sometimes for acting, at least, it can be a little difficult to separate yourselves because it's you that's right. pretty much embodying the character. So it's it's going to have parts of you regardless, uh, no matter how, you know, with, how prepared you are. Right. So then that's why, you know. It's hard to you got to yeah. trick your mind. Oh, absolutely, it. absolutely. No, it's 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 vulnerability, right? I mean uh, that, and that's that's the you talk about the challenges. I think the scariest thing is being vulnerable, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's in, in all facets. Uh, as a as a designer, as a director, as a as an actor, we're we're laying out our point of view of things. We're exposing our the way we process things. Mm -hmm. Here's what moves me. Here's right. what what compels me. And if someone looks at that and goes, ew, right, yeah. then it becomes like, yeah. oh my gosh. You start um, getting yeah, self-conscious and insecure. Right, and things, right, yeah. and right. It's like, well, why am I even doing this? And exactly. Like imposter syndrome <laughs> kicks in. Exactly. <laughs> Just go and spiraling. So um, as far as teaching, same question. Challenges? Um, um, fulfill, fulfillment, fulfillment and challenges, yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's a, a amazingly fulfilling to see people uh, achieve what they want to achieve or move towards a goal they want to 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 move towards. Um, uh, and so, simply, again, for me, opening up someone's mind as a for a way to approach things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's the especially in acting training. It's not about uh, about necessarily getting it right or wrong, but it's understanding your own approach and your own uh, uh, kind of path in the in the process. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, the, the double-edged sword of that is that sometimes we can see, boy, person X didn't get as far as they wanted, mm -hmm. but knowing it's a lifelong journey as yeah, well right uh, and i think culturally sometimes we have a need to get it right or you know get it right 
tell me what's I'm doing, what I'm doing wrong, and I won't do that again. Versus, you tell me what you did. Right. You tell me what worked. You tell me what you were attempting to achieve. You mm-hmm. tell you tell me, and so continuing a dialogue that way to get people to understand the work itself. Mm-hmm. And so, in a sense, it's uh, it, acting training can be a, a journey of uh, coming to to grips with being honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. I need to be honest yeah. with myself. What's the work I actually did? Right. What was I expecting? What did I want? You know, yeah. uh, and that's where in other things like in sports, there's a tangible outcome. Uh, if I hit 1,000 golf balls on the on the driving range, mm-hmm. I can see. Oh, my swing is now this way or mm-hmm. this. But in acting, it can be yeah. less specific, mm-hmm. and so we can trick ourselves into thinking we've done work. Mm-hmm. Because I thought about it a lot, or trick trick yourself into thinking that there is no work to be done because exactly. you don't have a specific thing to work on. Exactly, it's not as linear and black and white as like right. sports or right, right, any other field. Yeah, and two, it's it's uh, again, there's there are statistics in sports. You mm-hmm. uh, you can stand on the free throw line and you can say, you know, you're a ninety two percent free throw shooter. Uh, are you a 92% actor? Right, yeah. <laughs> I don't, who knows? Right, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. The, the subjectivity of it can be, can be challenging. And I think that's where, uh, you know, when you talk about the different challenges in that or, the, or even frustrations, it, it can be sometimes the, the, um, the lack of, of rubric, the lack of objectivity. And universities in particular always want to have specific learning outcomes. Show me the rubric that mm-hmm. you got this. Yeah, that, that that's a thing. Yeah, when it <laughs> like with letter grades, when it comes yeah. to performance based stuff, like at, like how can you put it on a letter grade if right. they're doing the work of like showing up and they're and showing improvement or doing at least what's been told right, asked right. them. You know, it's kind of right, and that's difficult. where the the <laughs> yeah the the kind of logistical things of here's my packing, here's my analysis, mm-hmm. here's this, here's this, mm-hmm. and it's all turned in and it's all right doesn't automatically mean it was a great performance right, yeah. or it doesn't automatically mean you challenged yourself. Mm-hmm. So is it the risk in the, that you're taking? Is it this? Is it, mm-hmm. is it the improvement? Is it the moment? Uh, there's yeah. so many factors. Um, yeah. I mean, it's easy for me to say on this end of my career, but I would totally advocate for removing letter grades from acting studios uh, because What's that ultimately going to mean? Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Especially, especially once after you graduate. <laughs> right. Right. So you it, it can't means go, nothing. Go and to the casting director, and be like, "Hey, I got an A in uh, my acting class." Right. You know? Right. <laughs> and and like like we said, if you could have all the pieces there and you did all the work, but it wasn't necessarily right. It wasn't yeah. good. Yeah. It sounds it terrible to say it that way. Yeah. But uh, so, how do you define that? And and really, the the the, the idea of the kinds of approaches you took are more important than the mm-hmm. actual product. Mm-hmm. And that's why, it, it, you know, in acting training, for me, my, the, the thing I would look at or, or challenge often is, are, are you teaching acting or are you directing someone to make them better in the moment? Mm-hmm. And if I knock my own profession as an acting teacher, I think there's a lot of acting training that is simply directing you in a scene Mm-hmm. And then says, "See how much better that is," and everyone goes, "Yeah, it is." Mm-hmm. But you walk out of there not knowing how to do it yourself. Mm. Yeah. And so that's that's the challenge. Yes, yes. And speaking of that challenge, which and just or just teaching in general, when did you discover that for yourself as a teacher, like the the difference between the directing to be good within that specific scene versus giving them the tools to be able to do it on their own. Yesterday, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no. I mean, I think it's a it's a like constant. Just, I'd like to say I knew that early, <laughs> but I think you know if, if I reflect on my own career and my path, that's my mentor uh, in, in 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 graduate school. That's what I took from him, but I didn't understand it at the time um, because we could all, it, my classmates and we were often very frustrated by not getting the specific fixes. Mm-hmm. Just being told that it, acting is about it choices. Yeah, I'm about, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's about making choices. As soon as you made some, let me know. Um, and and uh, I think as a young actor, I was yearning for the right and wrong. Tell me 
you know, mm-hmm. what was wrong about that and I'll fix it. Mm-hmm. And he never did. Yeah. You know, he would give us notes like, well, it wasn't all horrible. Um, right. And just kind of challenging us constantly. But I didn't understand at the time that, that I was being challenged to think for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and so that's been a, a, thing, a lifelong learning process. Yeah. Do you want, yeah, let's, do you want to touch a little bit more on that? Because yeah, we go in to being actors and stuff and we're told that, you know, there's no right or wrong answer, mm-hmm. but we always, at least I know me personally, I, it, it took me a while and still sometimes it take, you know, depending on what it is, the difficulty of still not looking for that result or, wh- where, sure. you know, wanting to know like whether it was right or wrong because it's like, I don't know. I think it's just like the phrasing, maybe, or just right. like switch, switching the, the words from maybe like stronger to weak, like instead of like right or wrong, like there's stronger choices. Yeah, versus yeah, not I, I, so strong choices. Absolutely, I think so. Uh, that's uh, you know one of the things. Uh, I think I mentioned this to you before that you know my my mentor, uh, my acting teacher, passed away a couple of months ago. And uh, we had a, we all gathered and had a celebration of, of life for him and telling stories and, uh, mm-hmm. and everything, the, the funny ways of, you know, that we were taught or talked to and, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, old school, you know, kinds of things. Um, but uh, as an example of that, uh, it was always, it seemed silly to us at the time, but, but David, my, my teacher, never let us point on stage, mm-hmm. point with one finger. Mm-hmm. He would yell at us, you know, call us out if we were pointing with one finger Mm -hmm. and it seemed so inconsequential at the time that of course people point all the time I I point with Mm -hmm. one finger but would never let us do it on stage Mm -hmm. and later or after a lot of conversations you know kind of learning over the years that his point haha see what (laughs) I did there um, the point he was making was that there's probably something more interesting that uh, that simply doing that, or like an eye indicator, mm-hmm. saying well, what I want to do and pointing mm-hmm. to yourself, right. it, it's, it's it's so generic. Silly, it's not a character. It's choice. not it's no. Just like it's a just a it's a generic thing. thing. And yeah. so yeah. being challenged, like something you said, that you think an actor should do. Right, right. Deal, yeah. um, that that we're looking for the interesting. We're looking for the compelling. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so eliminating those kind of cliche things from you, or, or those those first impulses, mm-hmm. to use some of the, some of our terminology, to dig into what is really unique, what is really you know unique and specific about this this character we're, that we're creating, mm-hmm. um, and so yeah, moving beyond those kinds of those kind of things. So yeah, it's not right or wrong, but there is interesting and dull. Mm-hmm. There is. Smart and stupid. I mean, right. the, yeah. there's uh, there are, are are ways to really approach that, and that's where it goes to the work that you're doing, and the and the not in the in the sense of I'm going to write more, I'm going to do this, I'm going to mm-hmm. do this, but in the intellectual rigor of that, mm-hmm. into the into the depth of of your thinking, or mm-hmm. the or the way that you that you're going to look at the world and see the possibilities, mm-hmm. and so in a in a bigger picture, I think the goal of acting training in many ways is to open up your mind to all the possibilities that are there mm-hmm. that often if we read a script you go well here's how this has to be done right and yeah. it's one of the things to, to be an old guy for a second why i'm when people i think aren't reading texts as much as they're watching them that can often limit because if i say oh read this play and you come back to me and said oh i watched that play you told me to read that mm-hmm. you found the youtube of the production mm-hmm. or whatever not that that's automatically wrong mm-hmm. but that's planting a very specific interpretation in your head mm-hmm. as opposed to right it's the dramatic of, imagination of, of bringing to your own ideas right. your, you have right. preconceived ideas for right. something and again that, that I, I can you know get a little caught up in the back in the day kind of notion about mm-hmm. that but but I do think it goes back to what possibilities are we looking for how mm-hmm. are we layering information onto it that's the whole idea of of creative process is saturating yourself mm-hmm. with the with the material to see what happens there's that word layering I was yeah <laughs> waiting for yep. it so like layering and point of attention those are like two key things that I, that I know that you mm-hmm. instill in your students um was that something that your mentor brought brought to you as well, or was that yeah, something that you learned? Absolutely. I mean, I think again, over time, I'm not sure I walked out of his class saying that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, but um, it is uh, again that the kind of as I reflect about the layering of my own understanding, uh, it, it's 
it is, I think, fundamentally the idea of moving into given circumstance, mm -hmm. that you're adding more information, you're adding more things to your consciousness mm -hmm. as opposed to stripping away. Right. When we get caught up in the stripping away, then mm -hmm. we're, f we're focusing on the, on the don't. Right. And that's one of my cliches that I, that I took from, from my training is that you can't do the don't. Mm -hmm. um, once I start focusing on what not to do, that that inhibits, mm -hmm. and boy, you could take that to the athletic metaphor as well. Mm -hmm. I'm standing on the golf tee, and there's water to the left. If I'm sitting there going, "Don't hit it left," <laughs> hit it left. <laughs> I'm probably going to hit it left <laughs> um, because right. that's all I'm thinking about. Right. How do you get positive swing thoughts? Mm -hmm. I'm talking in golf analogies today because the Masters is going on. Oh, so yeah. I thought I'd thought I'd kind of reflect that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> By the time this comes out, the yeah, we might be, gone. we might be, <laughs> but yeah. Um, <laughs> so going back, so in your opinion, what to you makes a compelling or interesting performance? Like, what what are are there, are there it, key it, things? Yeah, it just goes back down to focus. Yeah, uh, and I think that's the that's that's always going to be the key, and, and whether we are phrasing it in terms of attention or target of attention, but it is that. We're compelled by, as audience members, by that kind of focus and clarity of thought and action, mm -hmm. right? And, and the joke we, we talked about in, in your class of, of why you don't want to act with animals on stage because their focus is better than yours. <laughs> that, you know, yeah. that cat is super interesting on stage because you don't know what it's going to do. Yeah. When that cat perks up and looks over, your eye goes there because mm -hmm. of the clarity of that yeah. focus watching a kid <laughs> yeah a kid same thing you know it's the truth of that intention and action mm -hmm. and so as actors really it's when we see someone truly engaged in the moment we're compelled by the clarity of their action mm -hmm. this is a person doing something mm -hmm. for some effect to mm -hmm. accomplish something right and man we're engaged mm -hmm. when they show us that mm -hmm. we're less engaged right like yeah. we watch them work or when, you know, all the phrases we use as acting indicating. teachers that we're indicating, we're, we're being precious, we're, you know, all of that uh, pushing. is pushing. <laughs> it's, it's a lack of, of truth in the moment. And that's where my mentor, what I was kind of was ground into me was that idea of truth through analysis and economy, mm -hmm. truth through analysis and economy, the work with the text and then how economical you were you are and, and the clarity of your focus mm -hmm. that if I'm doing all kinds of 25 different things to be interesting it's not yeah. going to be interesting right yeah you know? um yeah I know a teacher um had said once that when you're interested then the audience will be interesting to you or no when you're in, you're in, yeah, like interested in what you're doing or whatever that's right they'll be interested. right and, yeah, and in so many different forms, that's so true. I mean, it's a, it's a basic of mime training. You have to see it before the audience sees mm -hmm. it. You know, it's 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 that level of of clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yes, that specificity and clarity. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's the the words of, of the of the school right. school time here. <laughs> right. Right. Very important. Um, s switch gears a little bit. Um, not only do you teach acting mm -hmm. and direct, you are also a stage combat mm -hmm. guy. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that, how you got into that? And sure, that was just something that, that early on I, I found interesting, intriguing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, again, I, not that uh, I'm not saying this, that I was an athlete, but I had a decent hand-eye coordination. Mm -hmm. uh, I picked things up fairly quickly mm -hmm. anyway. Um, and so that, that there was a logic to the stage combat, mm -hmm. uh, uh, stage violence that, um, uh, that was, that was interesting to me. Um, you know, as a freshman in college, I was in a production where I was handed a sword and, you know, you have to do this sword fight in this. And mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, this makes sense to me. I like this. Um, I liked physical humor early on. Uh, uh, I, I loved the Three Stooges as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, I realized as a as a young child, if I pretended to fall down the stairs, I could scare my grandmother. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, that was that physicality was always intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. And so, even early on, I was I felt I was a much more physical actor um, mm -hmm. beca because of that. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, I started doing workshops and doing different trainings and uh, you know, uh, that along the way. Uh, and in a sense, what I really like about stage violence is that it's acting in microcosm. I was just saying this in the in the combat class the other day, is that there's a very clear uh, intention. Mm -hmm. There's a very clear action to that, um, and if I if I connect to that, I'm storytelling physically. Mm -hmm. So you know, if I if I have an intention to knock you out, mm -hmm. uh, and I, and I raise a fist and and execute a punch, you know, that the yeah. clarity of that mm -hmm. is 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 acting in microcosm, mm -hmm. and so it it made sense to me uh, as an actor of wow, this is. Mm -hmm. This is an objective, this is an action, and this is clarity. Yeah. And then there's your truth through analysis and economy. Right. If I economize physically and tell the story the right way and I'm not flailing all over the place, mm -hmm. the audience will see, wow, he just wanted to knock him out. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of compelling focus is, is um, really uh, exciting to me. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you, when you watch other combat in like movies or plays, do you, are you like, if it's done better do you criticize it like are you do you critique are you one of those or do you just yeah, take yes it no i mean there's some things that i look at and go oh, that was so silly yeah. i mean as a as a person who has that background i my philosophy always with it is character driven mm -hmm. and so if i'm going to get critical about things if i see things that suddenly everyone in that world fights the exact same way mm -hmm. how did everyone get to be so adept right. um yeah. You know, then I go, oh, that's mm -hmm. not telling the same story. Mm -hmm. But if it's character-driven, mm -hmm. story-driven that way, mm -hmm. that this person fights with this background, this person fights with this background, mm -hmm. I'm more taken by that. I'm more, uh, I'm more compelled by that. So yeah, my, my criticism generally is only in the in the sense of if it breaks the world of the play mm -hmm. uh, it, from yeah. from the character perspective. Is is that the same approach when you're watching acting? Like, or do you yeah. find yourself criticizing or like more of a critical analysis as, if, as opposed to just enjoying it's it? It's not for conscious. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there would have been a time period, I think, earlier on, especially where I may have been more more attuned to that. Um, I, I think it's here, and it, I think you might find this even with your own classmates and the companies that you're in. We're harder on ourselves than we are on people we don't know. Right. Yeah. That I can go see a show, uh, you know, at the Tanger Center, or, you know, wherever, um, with no one I know, mm -hmm. and and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I come here to right. <laughs> to see a production that we're doing, right. and I'm automatically more critical right. just because my mindset is is mm -hmm. in where you are in the growth and all, right. you know, all that yeah. as well. Um, but you know, I, I don't. I, I think here again, boy, this speaks to where we're all coming from even in the in the process um if i'm tired and cranky i'm gonna sit even a, a netflix show i'm gonna <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna go like look for, what yeah. are they doing yeah. um if i'm if i'm open and receptive mm -hmm. so i think sometimes i even have to challenge myself to go okay let's let's just enjoy this yeah. i can I, I mean i think i may have said this to you guys in, in class too I, I mean part of it and i'm not dismissing anything but there is an expectation aspect of it. If I'm going to spend 150 bucks for a ticket mm -hmm. uh, and go through a lot to get there, right. I do have a certain expectation. Yeah. Um, but uh, and uh, again, I'm not diminishing just you know or or making it an automatic financial connection. But um, look, I like college basketball. It can be frustrating because they don't shoot well. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. as well as in watching the NBA. Right. The NBA. There's an expectation, college basketball, high school basketball. Right. But I can have a great time at a high school basketball game. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing, too, is like some people will take that same critical analysis of that high expectation and put it, place it on all on all things. Exactly. Like, and, and, that, that's, and that's not a fair way of... <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you know, go to Ruth Chris and order a $75 steak. That's going to be typically pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Um when I go to Waffle House and get steak and eggs, I can't be like, this steak is terrible. Yeah, right. Yeah. Get what you pay for, get, you know. Yeah, what you're and so, and, and again, I'm not making, there's not an automatic connection to to great value because of the ticket price. Right. But expectation of, of venue, experience of, of everything. And yeah. I think 
sometimes we, like you said, we get really hypercritical of like, what were they thinking? Right. Yeah. Um, I can sit back and enjoy it, mm-hmm. and uh, and I, I feel like it's my responsibility to give attention mm-hmm. as well. And that's where I think with the theater right now, we're in a little bit of a funky place coming out of COVID and not being in in audiences with each other, mm-hmm. that we're so attuned to sitting on a sofa watching something pour over us mm. we're not as attentive as we could or should be often right. um and where our responsibility is in that so i think it'll be an interesting couple of months years maybe as we move into yeah. what the new normal will be if there ever will be a normal yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i think that's that's thrown out the window uh, even before covid <laughs> yeah 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 i think so <laughs> um due to people who will name yes <laughs> remain nameless but um so with that being said uh mentioning like the, watching tv and stuff like that like more screen stuff mm-hmm. was that ever a focus did you ever want to try your hand at in any aspect of film or tv no it was never uh, something that i said here's the next step for me mm-hmm. um when opportunities presented themselves i you know, I, mm-hmm. I did that especially early on i i ended up having a weird kind of uh aspect of my performing career, I ended up doing a lot of uh, like industrial training videos and that. So mm-hmm. I was, you know, we had a large med school down at, at Florida, Shan's Teaching Hospital. So I did a lot of of medical training you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, shows, videos, mm-hmm. um, and the, boy, there's our you know, our conversations of type and that. I typed early on in a young professional way. Um, so I was always the doctor, the anesthesiologist mm-hmm. coming in to talk to the families um, uh, and just, you know, lay out all the medical uh, terminology. Um, uh, and so, again, I enjoyed that, did some commercials, did, you know, did that whole, you know, you know kind of thing. Um, but it wasn't anything I said, boy, I have to go do that again. Mm-hmm. Um, and there again is the journey aspect. And, and uh, I think, again, it's being honest with yourself of what you desire, what you what you want to do, and then what are you doing to make that happen? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, and so that wasn't something that I laid a path to, to do. When opportunities presented themselves, I did it. And then when they didn't, because I wasn't pursuing them, I couldn't yeah. sit there and go, I, I'm never right. getting a chance to do this. Yeah. I'm not looking for it. Right. Did you, or do you know how good of an acting teacher you are? Like, and has that ever crossed your mind and like that you are pretty good at what you do? I mean, uh, hey, wow, that's a, you know, boy, you, you went right to the, let, let's, let, let's force you to do this. Um, okay. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, look, all of our, our, our egos are present, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I I think I'll I'll say this and see if I believe it later. Um, you know, I I like to think I'm good at what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, we all have our our doubts, or we all have our our mm-hmm. imposter syndrome. Like, mm-hmm. gosh, um, again, in the same thing I was saying, like with 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 directing, there are times I'm I'm thinking like, did I even get through to anybody here mm-hmm. or I could walk out of a class and go that was pretty darn good I'm mm-hmm. feeling pretty good about yeah. myself and then I come in a week later and say well, let's see your work and no one's listened to me <laughs> I'm like was I not here did I yeah. you know um, so no I think I think for any of us to do what we do we have to have a healthy ego mm-hmm. and belief in ourselves but it can't be blinding it right. can't be just like I'm here now. Right, yeah. um, and that's why I think it has to grow. It has to evolve. Um, you know, I'll look at things that I did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and say, oh my gosh, I'm not even doing that anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I better do that again. It's like, well, no, I'm doing this now. So there's an evolving aspect of that. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I would like to think I'm, I'm, I'm decent at it. Um, and I also have to accept the fact that it's such a personal process everyone's not going to do what I do. Right. And so all I can do is say, here's, here are our approaches. Here's ways to think, try this out. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you leave, you might do three things that I told you, five things that John told you, eight things that Michael told you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an amalgamation of all all that, you know, and like even, you know, like I said, my mentor, there are many things that, that, that I do just like I learned from him mm-hmm. and others that are 
perversions of that and mm -hmm. bastardizations of it. You know, the Michael Chekhov work that he did, that he taught me, his was a bastardization of his teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's kind of Frankenstein versions of all yeah. the people that you work with. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, and it's a continually uh, layering and learning process, too. Yeah, I was going to ask about that um, as far as, like, what approaches, acting techniques mm -hmm. that you instill in your teachings. Um, you mentioned Chekhov. Right. Um, were there any other out of out of the main ones that we know like that? It's primarily Michael Chekhov-based mm -hmm. for me. Oh, Stanislavski, obviously, but yeah. they're all, all kind of... <laughs> yeah, Stanislavski's yeah. just... Yeah, he's it's the... the right. <laughs> so, in, or, you know, the, the, the foundation of yeah. that is kind of springing off from there. Um yeah, I think it's it's different bastardizations off of of the Stanislavski Chekhov tree mm -hmm. um, for me, and then there's where my own, my own psychology background comes into play then too, because in in that work I think I translated some things, especially from uh, like um, uh, the transactional analysis work that I'll do, mm -hmm. you, you know, um, and. Uh, you know, from the I'm okay, you're okay, to the games people play things. Mm -hmm. So layering in kind of a behavioral psychology approach mm -hmm. uh, to looking at behavior uh, has been key for me. Yeah. So it's weird, too, because I have a very physical sensibility with the Chekhov work, but I also have a very analytical sensibility with the, with the psychology of, mm -hmm. uh, of behavior. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit more? Like, psycho how do... How important is psychology? I think, because we were talking about it in class, mm -hmm. like, do you think that that should, that should be, like, something that actors should be, that should be part of the curriculum, should it not? <laughs> or, or should or could. And again, could it's, be, it's, yeah. what inspires, it's what inspires people. I, I mean, I, I could argue for actors should take psychology classes. Mm -hmm. I could also act, argue for actors should take a lot more literature classes. Uh, actors should take a lot more art classes. Mm -hmm. You, you yeah, know, um, yeah. I mean, it's really just world experience. Mm -hmm. For me, I was always intrigued by human behavior. Mm -hmm. So that was an access point f for me. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was joking about falling, down, pretending to fall and scaring my grandmother. Mm -hmm. That, I didn't articulate it then or understand it then, mm -hmm. but n knowing that that the, those behaviors could create different different things. Mm -hmm. Why was that? Why? What about this? And where did this come from? Why did this person behave this way? Mm -hmm. And looking at access points to understand that. Mm -hmm. If we're really trying to mirror human behavior, reflect human behavior, reflect mm -hmm. society, you know, all the things, the cliche things we talk about in theater classes, um, I have to experience certain things. Right. Uh, and understand them. So that's why literature is so important. That's why, that's why your engagement in the world is so important. Um, for me, the 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 clarity of of uh, of my psychology background and my, my my major there aided in my curiosity towards the given circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so that's where kind of tying all that together. You know, what should be taught? Things that make you curious. <laughs> you know, um, and that's where, you know, my old guy sensibility again is if you're not curious, I don't know how else to teach you <laughs> to, 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 to dive into the circumstance. Right, yeah. You have to be curious about something. Right. And so, yeah, that's where, that's where I think it's, it's all about curiosity. Curiosity. It doesn't kill the cat when it comes to acting. <laughs> um, Curiosity is the cat. Yeah. Ooh, the plot <laughs> thickens. So you you mentioned your old guy sensibility, uh -huh. but ladies and gentlemen, let me let me just tell you, <laughs> don't let don't let the gray hair, white hair <laughs> fool you. He he got his ears to the streets. Like he knew who Pooh Shiesty was. I didn't even know who Pooh Shiesty was. Like so, how do you is since you obviously you know you we all getting older, but the class usually you're teaching younger right. kids all the time as you're getting older so how important was it important for you to like stay in like in the know when it comes to like the younger generation or is that just something you were doing anyway <laughs> yeah well I, I, I think it wasn't a, it's not necessarily a purposeful I need to be aware of what's going mm -hmm. on there I just like knowing mm -hmm. I, there's a there's a curiosity thing I, I like to know what people are listening yeah. to I I still have your, your music background. Yeah, I think so. And and just 
man, again, it goes to curiosity, I think. Um, I mean, I love, I still have a, a number of alum that will text me, you need to listen to this now. Mm-hmm. I'm like, cool. I put it on the list and I listen to it. Um, and so, yeah, musically especially, I think it's, it's, there's so much that we connect to rhythmically, culturally, I mean, everything in terms of, uh, of musical styles. And that's always been, in, you talk about the, you know, as a director creating a world of a play, mm-hmm. I've always wanted to have a musical sensibility about that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, you know, if people tell me, you know, here's, you know, here's what you're listening to now, or I know you like this, you should listen to this. Mm-hmm. I'll listen to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So whether it's, you know, whatever, whatever genre, whatever style, I, I like so much of it, yeah. um, or can find out like, wow, I've never heard anything like this before. Right. I think you and I were talking last year about, um, uh, I forget who even told me about this, but 070 oh, Shake. Yeah, 070 Shake, You know, yeah. like, oh, like, whoa. Use some of her songs um, for my best prediction. There you go, you know? <laughs> um, so things out of the blue that, um, yeah. right now I'm listening to a lot of outlaw country, um, which, you know, Coulter Wall and, uh, uh, Paul Crockett, uh, you know, things like that I never would have thought uh, of, but, you know, right. one of my other friends, uh, an alum from, from uh, gosh, maybe 2004, three. when did Nathan graduate? Shout out to Nathan West, an amazing photographer, um, who I, I went and saw his uh, his exhibit in New York when I was up there, and uh, and he turned me on to a whole list of uh, of of new artists or not even new but new to me that I have to listen to so I'm cycling through uh, my whole my whole outlaw country phase now have you have you ever done a musical have you directed a musical yeah yeah yeah, a bunch Uh, again I I directed a a lot of musicals early on that's that seemed to be a a thing that kind of got thrown my way Mm -hmm. Uh, and again I think it speaks to where I was interested in creating the event Mm -hmm. Um, and so many of the bigger musicals, the bigger shows were, were events. And I liked the small two-person, you know, uh, a drama's night as well. But I liked coordinating or creating, the, you know, the big event. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, I did a lot of musicals. Nice, nice. Um, so for those out there who might be interested in teaching or acting mm-hmm. or directing, what what advice would you give them, like if someone were to come up to you and ask you anything, or, or just life lessons? Like, what would you suggest? Wow, stay to uh, you know, it's gonna um, seem cheesy, but but <clears throat> stay curious. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that's that's one of the keys of of you know what are you what are you bringing, and what do you want to bring. And don't get caught up in trying to second guess and see what people want you to bring. <laughs> um, you know, I think that we're, and this is an audition thing. I mean, you hear you hear casting people talk about this. You hear acting direct uh, acting teachers talk about it. You hear hear, uh, you know, all different perspectives of. I think we are at our best when we are being authentic, mm-hmm. right? And uh, um, uh, in an audition sensibility, for, for example, it's like. All you can do is your work. Mm-hmm. Here's my here's my work. There it is. But if you're trying to if you're desperate to get the job and you're thinking they, they probably want this, mm-hmm. you're not going to be authentic and you're probably not going to get the job. Mm-hmm. You know. So moving into teaching, moving into into whatever, it's. I, I think we are <laughs> bound to be more successful when we're being our, our authentic self. Here's who I am. Here's what I have to offer. Here's. Mm-hmm. Here's my approach. Here's my philosophy. It's almost like, I mean, you, you know, you're in a class. You're probably writing, you know, practice statements of teaching philosophy. Mm-hmm. You can't craft those to what people want to hear. You have to craft them to who you are. Right. And that's always my advice. I think if I see, if I'm, you know, interviewing people or I'm, uh, you know, whatever at whatever level of of, if it's a, for a graduate assistantship or for whether it's a teaching interview or whether it's an audition. Mm-hmm. It's really easy to see when people are telling you what they think you want to hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's not authentic. Yeah, but sometimes I mean, one can argue like because of some some people that will be too like they'll be authentic, but it's like it'll turn people like off. So then it's like, well, if I am being authentic, you know, it's being 
shunned away, so I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it I, way, I think it, it probably goes into a semantic argument of what is authenticity versus what is honesty, or what right, you know, yeah. uh, because. Yeah, if if you're simply going like, yeah, here's who I am. If you don't like me, I don't care. Um, well, no, you want a little bit more than that. Yeah, um, yeah but uh, uh, I think the flip side of that too, though, is that you don't want to put yourself into situations you don't actually want to be in anyway. Right. So if I'm pretending to be something or saying this is what I do, and then I get there and it's like, ooh, this is awful. Yeah. I kind of put myself in that position because yeah. I told you I was this. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I don't want to, you can't change the rules on it. Right, yeah. Um, but you're right. No, you don't want to walk in and go, like, here's who I am. <laughs> Deal with it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can't take me at my worst. Yeah. You don't deserve my best. <laughs> wow, I like that. <laughs> um, cool, cool. Um, so, do you have any specific shows that, like, in your time now or, or specific things within the space of, you know, teaching and um, directing that you want to accomplish going forward. You mean like specific like, productions? Yeah, that, specific you know, production that you want to work on, or no, you know, is acting totally done for you now? Not necessarily. Or? No, I think again, if something presents itself mm-hmm. in a in a way, I think I've I've really been uh, uh, engaged and excited by developing new work um so you know i wouldn't point to one thing of oh here's the show i want to direct it's not like you know if you asked me this you know 20 years ago it'd be like i must direct hamlet kind Mm -hmm. of thing no i wouldn't be that but just to think of a title um but now i'm i'm more interested in connecting with emerging artists uh uh writers in particular and and helping achieve those visions Mm -hmm. so new play development has been something i've really been um uh excited by in in the the recent past and i think moving forward that's what what is going to be the the, the that next step for me nice. um yeah because uh, i haven't told you yet but yeah i actually got into a company a theater company that that's focusing on new, new i saw that yeah, um, well, yeah i saw that on, on my <laughs> social both. media lurking <laughs> yeah. um but no that's fantastic yeah uh and i think that's 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 really exciting work yeah that yeah cool cool so what keeps you going now What's what's your motivation now? Uh, caffeine and alcohol. <laughs> um, caffeine until five, and then alcohol. No, um, <laughs> I wish that wasn't true. Um, but um, the artist know what's up. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, I think that again, kind of going off of that, what keeps me going in this is there are still curious people. people out there that I want to help. Uh, and and I think for me at this stage of my career, um, because, I mean, obviously I'm, a, I'm at the at the tail end. I'm not at the, you know, oh, I'm starting to teach now. I'll have this. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been, I've been doing this for, you know, more years than I want to say out loud on a podcast. <laughs> um, but, you know, in the remaining years in my teaching career, I want to be... Uh, still an agent for change Mm -hmm. in where we can be better Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's in all all things uh, in in approach in material in in style in accessibility in in so many ways and so that's the what keeps me going is not just the oh we have to deal with this now but in looking at how can we do this better Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it's work-life balance in our rehearsal schedules, whether it's it's providing appropriate material, whether it's it's in, engaging and encouraging new voices, that's what is. I hope I continue to to do and never become the person that goes, well, the way we do it here is this. Mm-hmm. Right, um, yeah, yeah. That's death to me. Yeah. Um, that's the. Uh, the boy that move on then if the, if if you get if I get to that point come back and drag me out of here and smack me around a bit because uh, if you hear that's where I am yeah. I'm not gonna be yeah. I'm not gonna be happy so with that being said um, you know looking for the curious people the individuals mm-hmm. you know how allowing well, that to motivate you how how important is the arts in life to you or what does it mean to you i, I think uh, I, I think it's you know at the risk of sounding cliche i think it's everything um uh, that's where that's where i feel the um 
we can make the world a better place. Uh, that, uh, that, yeah, I think the, the more that we can make make it accessible, make it, uh, make it meaningful uh, in all levels. And it's not that everything has to be, and now here's the statement of social justice that's being made. Uh, I'll tie it back to the beginning of the conversation. I think the Three Stooges can be important. Um, if it's simply providing a little bit of laughter and light <laughs> in some crappy times, um, that everything we do has the potential to to be challenging that way. Yeah, Beth Level uh, came here a couple years ago in one of the master classes she was doing uh, for us, uh, and one of the students asked her, you know, how does she motivate herself for eight shows a week, you know, month after month after month, doing the same show over and over? How does she, you know, make it fresh? Um, and she said, made a very moving statement, I thought, of just saying that she reminds herself every time she walks out on that Broadway stage that there's a kid from Iowa, Idaho, Wyoming in the balcony seeing their first professional production, mm -hmm. seeing their first Broadway show, whatever, that deserve all yeah. that she has. Yes. Um, and that's that's key, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Got to have that, your why. What's your why? Is your why stronger than your want? Um, yeah. Uh. Well, I have one more question, but before I do that, I appreciate you taking this time. Sure, Jim. sure. Um, so how how can we keep in touch with you and follow you on your journey? I know you said you got, you're on social media. Get your ears to the streets. <laughs> got your ears to the streets. Um, I know I was going to ask um, what's next for you, but you said you know, yeah. whatever comes your way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much whatever. Yeah. So um, you, you see you're on you're on Facebook. Yeah. Some uh, kind of. I kind of lurk here and there. <laughs> on Twitter, you know, all, all those. I'm not, uh, I'm not the, the most active uh, poster of things, but I do, yeah. I do lurk, uh, yeah. try to see what people are up to. Nice. People can always shoot me a text. Uh, they can always shoot me an email. Uh, Jim Wren. I, I, Jim Wren at uncg.edu. Um, and uh, I have almost always respond <laughs> maybe not immediately but uh but i but i do get to it he does his best i do I, I do my best i uh i listen to all musical suggestions <laughs> i uh i respond to uh to uh, uh almost everyone <laughs> <laughs> and on, on facebook it's jim Ren as well i think so yeah yeah, yeah i must be out there yeah. <laughs> You'll find pictures of my grandson. So, yeah, if you want to give him some musical suggestions do it, or do ask it. any acting questions. Reach out. Yeah. He'll almost, he, he might get back to us. I might. I will. I will. <laughs> I will promise, but I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll try. <laughs> well, Jim, I appreciate it. Cool, man. Um, last question. When it's all said and done, what do you want your legacy to look like? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the clock here. You're thinking, man, you dropped this in <laughs> the last minute, so I can't say, "Oops, gotta run." Now. Um, what do I want my legacy? Uh, uh, golly, now people are gonna think I'm lame. Um, hey, so here, it's your here's your most authentic so self. Here's my my thing. I I think. Um, uh, I would hope that that people remember me. Not so terrible. Say, think of me as um, someone that was there for them, uh, and and uh, I think. Wow, this sounds so awful to say. I think loyalty is such a big thing to me that. Um, here we're joking about I'll, I'll try to get back to you I think my legacy ideally and what I would hope to impart on people and my, my students or my colleagues whatever is that is that if you say you're going to do something you do it mm -hmm. that the, the being honest with yourself and and being and that level of truth whether it's in your acting or, or whatever that um that I would try to impart that that level of honesty, and yeah. and the truthfulness into, if I tell you I'll, I'm going to 
be there for you, I'm going to be there for you, mm -hmm. and not just say what you want to hear. Right. So I've I've never been great at at um, what other people might say, blowing smoke up people's ass. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to compliment you. Uh, I, I'm going to encourage you, but I'm never going to, you know, yeah. be like, oh, yeah. it's always going to yeah. be fine. It's going to be great. Yeah. Um, and so that level of honesty and uh, and 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 compassion. It's balancing honesty and compassion are, are, can be difficult. Mm -hmm. But I would hope that that might be something that I might might be remembered for. It's got to sound funereal all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Um, and yes. Your most authentic, truthful self. There so, you go. You know, it's no right or wrong answer. That's right. That's right. Okay, cool. <laughs> so. Good. I passed. Did I get an A? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, thank you guys for another episode. I appreciate you joining me. Um, until next time, guys, peace, love, and blessings. Mm -hmm.